Hi guys, in the last video we saw how we can create scenes in Factory IO, connect WinSBS to Factory IO, and write a simple logic in WinSBS. Last time we used the start push button to control the start light. Now, what do you think will happen if I replace the start light with the conveyor? Will the conveyor turn on? Let's try it and see it ourselves. And the answer to this question is yes, it will turn on the conveyor for the time the push button is pressed. This is an advantage of using PLC, if we want to introduce changes to the system, we don't necessarily need to change the connections to PLC. Here I replaced the two outputs. However, the same can be done by just changing, the address of output, in our logic without changing the connection. As there is no physical connection between the input output module and the PLC. So the question is how does it's working if we have no connection? Let's look at the architecture of PLC to understand this. PLC works on 12 or 24 volts DC supply, always refer to the manual before powering. Some PLCs can be directly connected to AC mains, as they have a switch mode power supply built inside, and for others, we need a 12 or 24 volt DC external power supply. The power supply is used to power PLC and the IO modules. There are two types of the connection source wiring and sync wiring, we will cover the topic related to hardware at the end. My aim here is to guide you so you need to know what are the topics we are skipping for now. Let's get back to the question. We have optical isolation between PLC and IO modules, this optical isolation is responsible for linking the IO and PLC and also protects the PLC. Now, let's try to control the start light and conveyor with the push button. I'll place the start light on Q0.0 and the conveyor on Q0.1. Let's add another network. Now we have to network one for the start light and one for the conveyor and if we run the simulation we can see that the conveyor and start light both turns on. Let's say we need to control more than two outputs, for example, I'll add an indicator to the panel and connect it to PLC's Q0.0 terminal. Now before creating a logic, I think it's harder to understand and remember the IO by their address so let's create a symbolic table so that when we add the address the symbolic name is placed on the input and output. For this click on the tools option on the right hand side. And start by adding a name I'll add start pb for the start push button and the address is i0.0 the type is bool as we are using digital input and output. Repeat the same for others once done we can see that the symbols will be added directly to the network. Now, the question is should I add one more network? Connect the output in parallel to the first rung. I'll suggest you connect the outputs in parallel as it will keep the logic clean. Let me show you. By connecting output in parallel we only input and it keeps the logic clean moreover the help of symbols in place of address makes it easier to read and understand the logic. I'll delete the network with three rungs as it's not needed. After uploading the new logic to the PLC we can see that it works as intended. So how the PLC functions? First, we have to upload our logic to the PLC. When the PLC is in running mode, our PLC reads the input, and according to the state of the input, an output is generated by PLC, with the help of the logic that we have created. And according to the output of logic our output device turns on, or off. Let's summarize what we have learned. PLC works on DC power supply. There is no physical connection between IO and PLC. We learned how to create a symbolic table for our PLC program. Discussed how the logic is executed. Demonstrated how changes in the system can be made easily. With the change of logic, we can change the system working. To start writing the logic we don't need to learn more right now. For the time being, we will be focusing on logic building and I will introduce the theory part that we will need when it is required. For now, I'll suggest you practice writing the logic we have used, 
it's not something big but, it will help you understand, and get familiar with the software. Until now we have only used the normally open contact, let's say we want to use the stop push button so how can this be done? A stop push button is normally closed type, let's try to make a logic to turn on the stop light. Let's start by adding a normally closed contact, and a coil, give them the proper address and simulate it. We can see that it works. Now, we still have a problem and that is our output does not stay on. To solve this problem, we need to study a new topic and that is a latch. A latch is a self-maintaining circuit meaning after energizing it stays on, or energized. Still, the question is how to make a latch in the logic. Let's create a new solution in WinSPS to keep everything organized. I'll name it to latch and create it. Now again we will click on OB1 and start by adding symbols to the table. Now we will add an input contact and a coil. Now if we add another contact, in parallel to the input contact, we have two paths to complete the logic. That is if any one or both the contacts are closed, at any moment our output will turn on. As it is similar to an OR logic. Still, we need to give addresses to all contacts and coils in the logic. We know one input is our start push button but what address should we give to the second contact? The answer is Q0.0. Hmm. Yes, we can use the output address as input. Whenever that particular output turns on the contact will be treated as closed. So as soon as the output is turned on, it gets latched by its contact. Let's simulate it in monitoring mode to see it and understand it better. At first, our output is off, as soon as we press the push button our output turns on and is latched by itself. In monitoring mode we can see that initially the logic gets energized, and then it maintains its state. And this is all for this video. I hope you liked it, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.